I'm going to show you how to make the Whimsical Santa by Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping and there are four hoopings, a selection of threads and you'll want matching bobbins if you're going to make yours reversible, some T-pins, any pin with a head on it will be fine, some masking tape, my squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size. I've also got some Solvi topper because I'm going to be using faux fur. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below. You're going to start off by hooping your two layers of wash away stabiliser. So place your stabiliser over the bottom part of the hoop and then insert the middle. Then we're going to pin around the top edge of our hoop, our inner hoop that is, to stop our stabiliser from being pulled down between the two hoop pieces. So take your pin, rest it on top of the inside hoop, push it through your stabiliser, bring it back round and through the stabiliser again. And you're going to do that on all four sides. The larger your hoop, the more pins you will use. Load file number one into your machine, that's his legs, along with your neutral thread. I'm going to be using white, uh, red so that you can see what I'm doing. Ideally you want to use the thread colour that goes with your fabric each time. Then we're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give us our placement outline for our batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch lines, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. We're now going to start adding our fabrics and I'm just doing a plain white uh, fabric on the back of every piece. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Now if you're making this completely reversible you're going to add both your front and back fabrics for each element at the same time. So you, you would stitch round three but um, unless you were adding a stiffener on the back, um, you would just stitch round three and then on round four you would place your fabrics down both back and front instead. I hope that makes sense. Okay, we're now going to stitch round number three and that's going to secure our backing fabric or stiffener if you're using a stiffener in place. So there's my backing fabric secured. We're now going to add fabric for the legs. I'm not adding um, a matching fabric on the back but if you wanted to do that you can. You just do it at the same time as you add your front fabrics. So place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. We're now going to trim up the excess fabric and I'm going to do the back at the same time I think. 
So trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches. And now we do the same on the front. We're now going to place the fabric for the boots. So place it over the outline and if you're adding a matching fabric on the back you do that at the same time and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure it. You might want to change your thread colour if it's high contrast against your fabric. I'm staying with the red so that you can see what I'm doing. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line and if you've got a matching fabric on the back you're going to trim that up as well. Next we're going to add our fabric for the cuff of his boots or trousers, I'm not sure which it is but it's one or the other and I'm using a faux fur here so I'm just going to turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to place that over the outline and tape it in place. I'm going to tape it each side and then I'm going to fluff up the fur And then over the top of that I'm going to put a piece of Solvi Topper and that will stop your fur getting caught in your foot as it travels. Now we're going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number six and you might want to change your thread colour for this so that it's invisible in your with your fabric so we're now going to trim up around the edge of the stitch line I'm going to leave the Solvi topper in place for now but I'm just going to remove it along with the fabric around the edge making sure that you've got a neutral thread loaded into your machine we're now going to stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag around all the raw edges of the both legs just remove your hoop and check your stitch stitching to make sure that there's no fabric poking through the zigzagging if there is trim it off then we're going to stitch do the satin stitching around his legs next so load your thread color and matching bobbin if appropriate into your machine and then stitch round number eight load your thread colour and matching bobbin if appropriate for the boots into your machine and then stitch round number nine I'm using black now load your thread colour for the cuffs of his boots or trousers into your machine along with a matching bobbin if appropriate and then you're going to stitch round number ten I'm using white. And that's all the stitching done. Before we go any further, I just want to explain 
something to you and give you some tips. Now you can see here that I've got the red showing through my white stitching and that's perfectly normal because I used a, um, a very high contrast colour underneath white and you can see the red showing through on the black here. Now this is the um, zigzag stitching that you're seeing underneath here. Always use the thread that is the hardest to cover up, in which case this is, would be the white because you can't get a sharpie uh, to cover up any little bits um, in white. So when you do your zigzag stitching, um, use white because you can always darken it but we can't take red or black down to white so where I've got this red showing through um, I wanted to make sure that you could see all the stitching so I was anticipating that this was going to happen take a sharpie pen and just dab it over the stitching And it all disappears. You can't do it on the white of course. I find it's better to dab rather than scrub. It gives you more control. Okay we're now going to free these from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge of the stitch line. And take care, of course, not to cut your stitches. And that's our legs complete. We're just going to trim up this raw edge here on top of each leg because that's going to be our join to the next hooping so trim close to the stitch line but not cutting the stitches and we can now set our legs aside for the minute we now come to the second hooping so load file 2 into your machine along with your neutral thread. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer as we did in the previous hooping. Pop your hoop into your machine and then stitch round number one and that's going to give us our placement outline for our batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. And that's also going to give you your fabric placement outlines as well. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. Place your stiffener over the back or your fabric Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 3 to secure it Place your fabric for his tunic over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. And if you're doing a matching fabric on the back, you would do that now as well. We're now going to trim up um, the fabrics. Oh taking care of course not to cut your stitches we 
we're now going to place our fabric for the cuff of his tunic over the outline and tape it in place and as before I'm going to put a piece of Solvi topper over the top I just want to fluff that up a little bit Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five and you might want to change your thread colour for this to an appropriate colour. If you're adding fabric to the back, do so now. I don't advise putting fabric, uh, um, a faux fur front and back because it can be really, really bulky and some machines really don't like that. I've just had a technical glitch. I'm ever so sorry. Um, you need to trim up around the edge of your stitch line, taking care, of course, not to cut it, both front and back of your hoop if you've done reversible. Then after that, we're going to stitch round number six, and that's going to zigzag along here, and your machine's going to stop when it gets to the first marker at the bottom here, and that's where we're going to start joining the legs onto this segment. So make sure that you've got a suitable thread colour loaded into your machine and bobbin as well if appropriate. So we're now going to add the legs. We're going to put this one on first and you're going to align this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the zigzagging stops. Make sure that you get your legs round the right way and just so that you know you've got one leg that goes back and one that goes down as if he's walking. And then we're going to tape that. I'm also going to pop a pin in And then this one is going to go where this next little marker is, like so. And again, this stitch line here sitting on top of this stitch line here. I'm going to turn this round to the side so that I can see what I'm doing. And make sure that if you use pins, that you keep them right out of the way of your stitch line. And I'm also going to put a little bit of tape over as well. The pins secure it and the tape stops it from going like that. Okay, we're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to zigzag along here and join the two legs to uh, the uh, tunic. Take your hoop out of your machine just check that you're happy with your join if you're not unpick the zigzag stitching reposition the legs secure them in place and then stitch round number seven again if you're happy with your legs we're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag the rest of the raw edges We now come to round number nine and that's going to stitch the quilting on top of his tunic and do the satin stitch edges. So make sure that you've got an appropriate colour thread and matching bobbin as well if you need one loaded into your machine. We're now going to stitch round number nine. Just to recap on what I was saying earlier about making the right choice of colour for the zigzag stitching around um, the raw edges. Under normal circumstances I would have used white so that it didn't show through uh, underneath the um, satin stitching. 
so when this is stitched I'm going to have the same thing that's going on here but that's fine I wanted you to be able to see all the stitching going on so we're now going to stitch round number 10 so make sure that you've got an appropriate thread colour and bobbin as well if needs be loaded into your machine next are the buttons down his tunic so load your thread colour and matching bobbin if you're doing reversible into your machine and then stitch round number 11 and I'm going with white for this so that's the second hooping that we finished stitching so we can now free this from the hoop so turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut your legs off we're now going to trim around the edge and free this from the hoop and take care not to cut your stitches either we're now going to trim up this raw edge to make sure that it's all neat ready to join in our next hooping so trim along the edge taking care not to cut the stitches we can set our work aside for the minute we now come to the third hooping which is his head so hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer as you have done previously load your neutral thread into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give us our placement outline for the batting If you're going to be adding a hanging loop this is where you're going to do it on this marker here so place it over the outline and tape it in place we're now going to place our batting over the outline and we're going to tape that in place as well pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line and take care not to cut your hanging loop or your stitches. If you're adding backing or stiffener now is the time to do it so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it place your hat fabric over the outline and if you're doing a matching fabric you'll do the same on the back and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it we now have to trim up around his nose so that we can lay our fabric down for that so I'm just going to trim up around this bottom st um, stitch line and if you've got matching fabric on the back you need to do the back as well so we're now going to place the nose fabric 
and this I am doing on the back as well so I'm going to turn my hoop over place the fabric over the outline and tape it in place and then we're going to do the same on the front load an appropriate thread colour into your machine and matching bobbin as well if needs be and then you're going to stitch round number five okay so we're going to do a bit more trimming around this area just to make sure that it's not going to get in the way when we put the beard on I'm going to trim a bit of this way as well and we need to do the same on the back here I'm just going to put a little bit of tape back I often get asked why leave the rest of it not just trim it off if you've got fabric that frays with the um, hoop and handling going across it it's going to cause it to fray so that's why we leave as much fabric as possible for as long as possible and add a little bit of tape on the front just to keep it out of the way we're now going to place our beard fabric make sure you get it around the right way over the outline and once more we're going to put solvy topper over the top if you're doing reversible then you add your beard fabric on the back as well then we're going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number six to secure it we're now going to trim up all our fabrics both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim away We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to do the zigzag stitching around the nose around here around the hat and it's going to stop where we come to join the body to the head so make sure that you've got an appropriate color loaded into your machine and remember what i said use the color that you find the most difficult to cover up so in this case it should be white even though i'm using a different colour so that you can see the stitching. We're now going to add the body to the head and we're going to align this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the zigzagging stopped and it's going to be at a little bit of an angle and then I'm going to pin it in place I'm sorry about background noises it's my cat <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little bit of tape each side just to hold the edges down and we're going to pop him into your, our machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two segments together load your thread color and matching bobbin as well if appropriate for his hat into your machine 
and then stitch round number nine. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of his beard into your machine along with a matching uh, bobbin if appropriate and then stitch round number 10. We're now going to load our thread colour for the satin stitching around his nose into our machine and an appropriate bobbin as well if needs be. And then we're going to stitch round number 11. And that's our third hooping that we finished stitching. So we can now free this from the hoop. When we trim around the edge, make sure that you don't cut off your hanging loop if you've added one or cut into his tunic. And that's our third hooping complete and we can set our work aside for the minute. We now come to the fourth hooping. So load your file number four into your machine along with your neutral thread. Then hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabiliser. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting for his sack and arm. Place your batting over the outline and take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place our backing fabric or stiffener, if you're using stiffener, on the back of the hoop and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Place your fabric for the sack over the outline and tape it in place. And if you're doing reversible, do the same on the back as well. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. Make sure that you've got an appropriate um, thread colour loaded into your machine. Trim away the fabric from around this area here and do the same on the back as well if you've got uh, if you're doing double sided. Place your fabric for his tunic sleeve over the outline and do the same on the back if you're doing reversible and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around his mitten. Place the fabric for his mitten over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. We 
We're now going to trim up around the cuff of the mitten. I'm just going to remove some of this excess along here. Place your fabric for the cuff of his tunic or mittens, it could be either, over the outline and tape it in place. And once more we're going to put some Solvi topper over the top of it and secure it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure it. And if you're doing um, reversible, you need to do the same on the back. We're now going to trim away all the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop. So starting on the back, trim around the edge, taking care not to cut your stitches. making sure that you've got a colour that you can hide loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to do the zigzag stitching around the sack and around the arm and the mitten and it's going to stop where we come to add our previous segment to this one. We're now going to join our head and body to the current hooping but before we do I forgot to trim around the raw edge here so I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit so that it sits nice and neatly in place. Okay, I'm going to turn this around this way because it's going to make more sense. We're going to sit this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here. And then we're going to secure it in place. And I'm going to use pins and a bit of tape. Make sure that you keep your pins right out of the way of your stitch line. I'm going to put a little bit of tape here and here just to hold those edges down. We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two segments together. Making sure that there isn't any tape in the way of your um, stitch line load your thread colour for the sack into your machine and an appropriate uh, matching bobbin if you need one and then you're going to stitch round number 10 load your thread colour for the arm of his tunic into your machine and a matching bobbin as well if needs be and then stitch round number 11. Load your thread colour for his mitten into your machine along with a matching bobbin if you need one. And then you're going to stitch round number 12. Load your thread colour for the cuff of the tunic into your machine. I'm using white 
along with the matching bobbin if you need one and then stitch round number 13. Load your thread colour for the snowflake motif on the sack into your machine. I'm going with gold along with a matching bobbin if needs be and then stitch round number 14. And that's all our stitching completed. I've got a little area here that I didn't trim back far enough um, and when I aligned it um, I just didn't get it quite right so I'm going to deal with that now before I go any further and rather than heck about at it I'm just going to take a sharpie and make it disappear. Simple as that. Sometimes the simplest things are the easiest fixes. Okay, we're now going to free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and carefully trim around the edge. I'm just going to trim up these little threads first. It's easier to do it in the hoop than it is out. It holds it nice and still for you. And take care not to cut anything underneath. So the last step of our applique, we've got two actually, we've got one to remove the um, excess stabiliser from around the edge and the second one to remove the uh, solvy topper. I'm going to do the edge first and also the back along the joins and I'm going to start on the back. Just take a cotton bud and some warm water and just run it around the edge. Now we're going to remove the solvy topper. I just take my little sharp scissors and lift the edge and then it should just pull off. And then I'm just going to fluff up his beard just by pulling it, uh, the fur from out of the stitch line. And I'm just doing it gently. push most of it in earlier it makes it very easy That's our whimsical Santa finished. It's really cute, isn't he? Let me know what you think. 
I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information, such as where I get my supplies, and some discount codes for you as well.